Hey, welcome to this episode of Hollywood Breaks. We are true Hollywood today by all being on our cell phones talking to our agents while waiting for the show to start. We don't know what we're going to talk about, but please enjoy this episode. Tim, how was your weekend? Did you have a good, nice weekend? I did. Lovely. My uh, brother from, um, uh, younger brother from Wisconsin came out to visit and we uh, did a ton of fishing. Ton of fishing. Oh, nice. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> killed, killed the yellowtail. I got a. You don't hear that thing. not often in uh, L.A. these days. I was also like, wow, that's such an L.A. Story. Visit, we did a ton of fishing. I'm like, wow, <laughs> that's that's the midwestern uh, version of uh, visiting L.A. Oh, that's yeah. why you had to set up my brother from anything. Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah. yeah if right. you don't say my brother from Wisconsin, it doesn't make any sense. If I said, right. yeah, Keith and I were hanging out at the beach, we did some fishing. People be like, what? be like, what? Where were you? Oh, L.A. Huh? You mean surfing? <laughs> like nobody yeah. fishes yeah. in the. <laughs> he actually started his own uh, fishing guide in Wisconsin. He does both ice fishing and lake fishing in the summer and river fishing. It's called wow. Heindel's Fish Tales. If you're ever in the north woods of Wisconsin, uh, look him up. He'll hook you up. We're getting to plugs this early in this show. This is incredible. <laughs> Dude, I'm coming hot. I'm coming hot. <laughs> This episode brought to you by Heindel's Fishtails. <laughs> Isn't that a great name? Like your next best fishing story awaits, right? Yes. Like, oh, that's, yeah. Oh, oh, did you come up with that tagline? Is that the tagline? Oh, come yeah. on, man. Woo. Free charge too, that was. Yeah, nice. Good for you, man. <laughs> wow. Maybe you, can get some, uh, paying off. <laughs> maybe you can ship him some Founders Brew and they can oh, maybe uh, be drinking Once Founders Brew. It. <laughs> oh, is that, you haven't started brewing it yet? No, it's not a brew. God, Come it's on, not guys. It's not really beer. You're killing me. <laughs> oh, I see. It's some sort of illicit substance. You can't talk yes, about. Yes, right. Shh. Like can't ayahuasca or something. Founders Brew. We don't talk about Founders Brew. All right. <laughs> I think. I think. Come on. I think Founders Brew is what's ha ha happening in Keith's mind. He's brewing. He's trying to figure <laughs> out. Brewing. Okay. Yes. What that's exactly going. Right. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's on my head. I got it all upstairs. <laughs> All oh, right. Are you talk hey. about anything in the movie space today or no? I think so. That'd be really nice. Uh, yeah. Really quiet the, day. Yeah, what's going on see in the movies? I don't know. You want to see the thing. Marvel movie this weekend? I heard the Marvel movie did. What's Marvel? Really... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Kick an ass. Kick an ass. Uh, all good. That's all good news. What's your What's your over under, Tim? Do you think it's going to break two? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Although if I, if I was like, like, um, putting line, I'd put the line at 150 and let people play with it. Cause I think it's, that's a, uh, it could nudge above that or it could, you know, that's still a ton of money. It's still a ton oh, of money. Still. I don't know Wait, how what was the opening? Where were we so far in the opening for? It was 36 uh, last night? 36 last night. Yeah. So right now, was 50. yeah. Wow. So it could be anywhere in between. Yeah. I think Tim's right. 150 is probably about the median and it could go either way based on, you know, how much people are enjoying the movie, yeah. you know, and whether or not they really need to feel the need to see it. But I'm, I'm going to tell you, I was, uh, I was in Hollywood for the last couple of days. I drove down La Cienga, um, Beverly center, gigantic poster <laughs> doc. What's his name? Dr. Strange. Dr. Strange. It's, yes. it's right there. And I looked at that. I was like, I think I already saw that movie in Spider-Man. And then I never, Ooh, that's it. Like I interesting. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what the story, I, I think I saw that storyline. And I now, I, now I'm now i like, oh, they just teased this movie. And I don't know, I was kind of over it as soon as I saw that poster. Or I guess, it, I guess I saw a billboard, it wasn't a poster, but. Well, Tim, I don't think a lot of other people are going to the movies really share your view on, on that particular. <laughs> I <know. laughs> hate to break it to you, buddy. No, 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 no I, 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 I get that part. And I think people are going to the movies because they want to go to the movies. I mean, we've been talking about this for two years of are people going to go back? And now all of a sudden they're like, no mass. It feels like summer. People want normal life. And this is the greatest excuse of like, oh, yeah, before the pandemic, there was Marvel movies. Let's go back and, and do it. Yeah. yeah, and Spider Man was great, so I'm not I'm not gonna say, but but I don't know if Doctor Strange is gonna carry a whole film for me. I don't I don't know if I'm gonna dive right into that one. I, I, this might be a Disney Plus um, viewing moment for me. Yeah, I Batman. mean, we didn't talk about Batman. Have you, see, have you seen that? I did. Oh, yes. Yeah. Right. Oh, shaking your head. Really? Lovely. No, loved it. I loved yeah. it. Loved it. I mean, it'll no. never be no. No one will ever beat Dark Knight, but I have to say, I was impressed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was 
I mean, I knew Matt Reeves was going to be good because I worked with him a little bit on apes and I knew he was going to deliver the goods. Um, it's just, I wasn't necessarily sold on Pattinson, but I know I was impressed. I, I, you know, the story, you know, the story was the story. I liked how they took some, uh, you know, some of the mythology and shifted a little bit, like not, you know, not making Thomas Wayne, not the sort of perfect person that he's been portrayed in the past, like yeah. making him is also flawed, like everybody else in Gotham. So that was an interesting take. I liked how they worked in Catwoman's character. Um, and Colin Farrell didn't even recognize him. I wouldn't even know that was no, him I know, unless I, know. I, had I seen it's so well done the credits. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was so great. Well and the sound design was phenomenal. Yeah. Wow. The way they worked that theme in there. Oh, yeah. great. Yeah. 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 It was bumpy, right? Yeah. It was. I there was a scene, the scene that where they um when they're in the Gotham Square Garden and he comes in and the windows all break up and the theme like starts as soon as he lands. <laughs> yes. I must have watched that like five times. I'm like, that is awesome. <laughs> Anyway, my favorite so, shot is when he when he comes off the elevator in that strobe lighting gun effect. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So brilliant, yeah. so yes. brilliant. Yeah, there were a lot yeah, of great sequences in that movie. Yeah, well done, Matt Reeves. I know, but so I know. good work. But do you guys agree with me? Like, do you think people want to get back to the film? I mean, Tim, you're releasing movies nowadays, so like, do are you getting the sense that people are ready to go back and it, you can put it, things in the theater and fits and start in fits and starts? You know, it's still a um, there's still a thawing, you know, it took two years to kind of like deep freeze that behavior of movie going, right? And people like not um, considering it, but we're, I think we're seeing with each of these kind of subsequent, you now with Sonic proving and with uh, bad guys proving or sh demonstrating, not proving, that families are willing to come back now, and we'll have another, we'll see what, uh, um, if there's any kind of family audience this weekend for Doctor Strange, I don't suspect as much. Um, so this is gonna be more of the 17 to 34 year old, mm -hmm audience skewing Latin A that has been driving box office for the last, you know, over the pandemic entirely. And even, even before that, um, I think the next interesting title will be Downton Abbey, which is uh, only a couple Ooh. weeks away, which is going to be a big, I mean, if not then, if not that, then nothing for the normal right. Female audience, right? Um, yeah, it, it is, you know, the, the other interesting thing that's kind of happening simultaneously to this is that the uh, COVID case is beginning to incrementally kind of tick up, but the yeah. hospitalizations are are declining. So there isn't that sort of that sort of mm -hmm. uh, same kind of dual relationship that I think triggers a like uh, reflexive resistance in people. And maybe you know I I know speaking for myself, I'm just like fucking over it. Pardon my language. <laughs> no, dude, I was on an airplane last night. I was on an airplane. No one's wearing masks. You don't think movie theaters are gonna. I'm pretty sure that, that filter Crazy. or that that reaction is becoming a smaller and smaller group of people. Yeah. And so now the burden, I think, what we're transitioning out of is that like the, the COVID influenced hesitation to return is transferring into what I think um, like the, the entertainment consumer of now is uh, already spending a bunch of money because right? they are already yeah. knee deep in streamers and they're making mm -hmm. more concerted value proposition decisions about going to the theater versus catching it at home. And that's even like, like independent of um, like day and date or similar, you know, releases like, like Warner Brothers did with the Batman. Um, I think it's, it's going to take like a, a continued that's... barrage of good movies hitting varied audiences at least through yeah. the end of the summer before we begin to feel like things are approaching a semblance of normal. No, I mean, it's $6.60 a gallon in Los Angeles for gas. People oh. are already spending a lot of money. They're not, yeah. uh, you know, a, a movie ticket. They're like uh, that or get to work. You know, that's <laughs> six dollars. Yeah, six sixty. It's not yeah. even six dollars. Like six dollars would be you'd be rushing to that gas station. Man. Damn, you, Tim, are you walking everywhere? <laughs> I don't know. I, I have like I have uh, in Uber or in, in, Uber, in the post uh, pandemic world. I haven't had a car for like six months not post pandemic. oh wow my lease ran out and i live i moved closer to the office so all oh, right so you can just walk yeah, since some of those little over. birds he's all like no, not that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yes love it uh, no, he's uh. with, with my man bun and uh <laughs> oh yeah you gotta have your man bun make sure it's nice and t right at the top <laughs> i know how that is come on uh, <laughs> be burned into the scooter no, I think you're right. There is, um, there is like a conservative effort to try to figure out where to spend the money. I'm just, I, I'll tell you what, if, if this 
box up it heats up like that you guys are talking about 154 for dr strange the people releasing Mar uh, uh maverick are going to be seen as super geniuses when that thing hits and they actually timed it right because you to hold it for two years and anticipate it to have the press that they have right now but then if if they bake 200 in, in an opening weekend which could e they could easily do they're going to be seen as total geniuses they could do it there's a lot of there's a lot of push i don't, don't know. think so no i i mean I, it'll be his, it, it'd be tom's biggest opening yeah be, i think I, that easy. that's conceivable easily uh i know that from what i've heard they're kind of struggling with women um in terms of their tracking anyway um because he's he's always had issues tom cruise has always had issues since he jumped on a couch we went through <laughs> issues with, with women you're saying yes tom cruise we has went, issues we, with women what are you saying uh, keith uh, what are Tom Cruise's issues? Are you trying to get me women? canceled, Tim? Come on. Yeah, uh, I'm just I, curious I what that. you mean his, by that. I'm people really... are already hunting you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. David Miscavige is at, right in my front door right now, <laughs> ringing the doorbell. No, what I'm saying is that ever since we, and we went through this at night and day. Um, oh, yeah, where it, that whole moment was really, it freaked a lot. And then, then there was the whole Matt Lauer thing. I don't want to get in the weeds and what Tom Cruise's issues are with women, but it was a difficult balance because women wanted to like him, but some of them were like, wow, is he stable? And there was this whole thing. And he's, I think he's kind of struggled to recover from that. Well, we'll see. I mean, I, I, I agree. I think Tim, yeah. you're right that I think it could be his biggest opening. I don't think it's going to get to 200 million. Uh, I've heard wonderful things about the movie and it's great. And it's like a pure, like theatrical experience. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of nostalgia happening with, people being excited to see it and the materials are badass like there's really yes. just two shots you need it's like him yeah taking it's off like the planes and him taking trail. off and him coming up so them. Them. yeah i mean it's come on <laughs> and then and then you throw in uh gaga's theme song and you're boom done it's like everybody's yeah. gonna see it i mean i just don't think i i don't think 200 million no but I, i'm curious tim because um i don't know if you read matt baloney's um newsletter but he came out with a, a piece last night that is a very pessimistic view of where we are in terms of the theatrical experience he he cited a study that was done a few months ago um and they they had said that i think something around eight to ten percent of the audience is lost forever in terms of yeah. coming back to theater theatrical yeah. yeah and he followed up with that study and they said those numbers have actually ticked up in the last few months so i'm wondering now so i don't know if it's necessarily covid or is it just the, the options and that combined with what went on in CinemaCon last year, last week, where they all pretended like everything was hunky dory. <laughs> I know, I know. And you're like, was... we don't have to change anything. And <laughs> now we're faced with this, like, okay, yeah, Marvel is going to do great. We all know Marvel movies kick ass. But what is that? I mean, is it really? I mean, really going to recover? Because some people are saying we're not going to be back to normal till at least 2024, 2025. And how many studios are going to be? on sort of on their last leg by that point if we continue in this pace other than like mm -hmm. disney or a warner yeah, brothers who, who well. release their dc you know uni movies every now and then mm -hmm. yeah i don't know I, I mean I, i'm just yeah well i'm just curious like <laughs> am i am i is that is that an accurate view or is it overly pessimistic i think it's I, you know, I have to guard again because I'm, I'm, I have a bias, like an optimism bias that mm. runs very deep. And so I need to counter myself in my head right. before I speak. Right? So I'm having a conversation right now. Um, I think it's, I think it's too soon to tell, frankly. I think the glass is like, the glass isn't half full, but it's almost half full. And it's going right. to take, I, I do agree that it's going to take all of this summer, all of the fall. It's going to take Avatar. It's going to take like all of those big, titles to get like at least a multi-year like a year trajectory or arc until we can begin to um feel like that the industry is fully back and even i say even back what does that I mean really mean is it unrealistic yeah. for us to expect that the like the pre-pandemic even like theater counts and and like available screens was just incredible right mm -hmm. insane amount and a lot of empty screens on a lot of nights so is this a, a part of a necessary contraction in the industry that um, is, I think for us at Lionsgate, where we're really, I feel really well positioned is that we have a um, 
combination of like tent poles, theatrical tent poles, not a ton, but we got them. And then we have a lot of titles that are kind of platform agnostic, but are quality films, right? High quality films, but they could go theatrical, they could go to a streamer. Um, and we, and living and as a content producer living in that space, I think there's a lot of confidence internally that we will uh, be able to keep our heads above water because we're not so um, dependent on any single one of those verticals, right? As a mothership of a company, which includes right. Star, Lionsgate TV and then um, the MPG Motion Picture Group. So I think the balance of that is is to our benefit. But I think it's it, like I said before, it's. Although, although, you know, there's so many, there, there are so many signs, <laughs> you know, here, there, there's a conversation in my head. Yeah. Like everywhere, everything all at once is a, such a like chef's kiss of a movie yeah. that has reinvigorated word of mouth. Uh, yeah. Word of mouth. I, I, that's all I've, the only play, way I've ever heard of it is word of mouth. It makes mm -hmm. me want to see it word of mouth. It's going to have a very long tail because of it. Yep. There, there yeah. is a cultish kind of opportunity that, movies can hit right now and i to me yeah. that's what's exciting about the the current situation is movies are not being flooded you're not being destroyed by um tons and tons of films and these indie films have been able to roll out and be seen um and that's why i think in the past we've even said like is this the possible return of the rom-com because we don't have to be destroyed by marvel movies only in the theaters and nothing else gets any weight to it yeah um, that's clearly mm -hmm. a show there yeah uh, yeah, I, I, I don't want it to return back to what it was. I What we've said all along is it was already broken. This just gave us the opportunity to do something new. Let, let, let's let reduce the number of theaters that smell like bad popcorn and let's see, <laughs> see if they can clean some of that stuff up um, but, or make the movie going experience very different um, than, than what it's been. That wouldn't hurt any of our feelings, I don't think. Yeah. Um, but also, like, let's get some real stories back into the theaters. There has been opportunity to have dialogue and create pop culture understanding of a topic or an issue, um, or even just even just rom coms. It's like even just a basic date movie that doesn't have to like blow you away would be a, all great opportunities for yeah. filmmakers today. Um, okay, so <laughs> hard. I, here, Art. Here's, here's really my great... first question. I have to ask a question in order to ask my real question. Yeah. Is it, are you, is it called, do you call it unbearable? Do you call it massive no. talent? Do you call massive it the English cage movie? What, what, what are we calling this one? Cause it's, the title is uh, like a hundred, the alphabet, I swear. Like yeah. we, which one do we start? It is uh, officially the unbearable weight of massive talent. It is colloquially known as, um, ooh, can, I, can, I, can I pause you guys? My vet's calling. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Doc, Doc has sure. ammonia. He's sitting over there. Go ahead. Sure. I was like, is this is this a, a rue? He's like, no, I can't actually answer this question. No, no. I turn <laughs> off. Just hey, welcome to this episode of Hollywood Breaks. Today we watch Tim talk on the phone while <laughs> Keith and I record this episode. Enjoy what else we Perfect. talk about this week. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to phone in today for Hollywood Breaks. We figured out that technology uh, is really we don't, we don't want to. We don't want to do fancy audio anymore. We're just going to do it over the phone. Hi, welcome to this episode of Hollywood Breaks. This is Real Hollywood. We actually don't talk to each other. We talk on the phone yes. while we're sitting well, at we table also, together. We all invested in Netflix stock, so we don't have a budget anymore to actually record. <laughs> we, don't, we can't. We have no audio equipment. We lost all our so money on this Netflix. This is the only way we can do it. Yeah, this is Hollywood breaking right here. We basically we have to talk to our <laughs> agent. Sorry, my agent's on the phone. I better talk. All's well. We had tons of jokes yes! at your expense. Just so you know. Yeah, we just made fun of you for about 20 minutes. So <laughs> oh, we're man. talking about how you were on, on the phone with your agent and you had a yes. yeah. video for real. Yeah. Because you weren't happy with the conditions. So you had to talk to your agent about your um, your perks. <laughs> yeah, I want to upgrade this situation. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't, there weren't enough really? green uh, M&Ms in your delivery that we sent over to your house. There is the, <laughs> you're like, these guys don't even know the name of my movie. Can you actually get me a better gig? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> uh, um, but, uh, so going back to where we were. So yeah, so the, the title, film. <laughs> it is, I, I, let's say this. So uh, Massive Talent, is that what it is? Or Nick Cage movie? Because I, I think that's what it's really been known as, right? The Nick Cage movie. That's how I've been saying yeah. it. Yeah. Because uh, it, 
uh, when I saw the trailer in the theater, and by the way, I'm not a fan of Nick Cage. I'm not. My kid oh. could tell you they nailed that stuff. I'm not sorry. Really? Con come on, dude. Seriously. Come on. <laughs> not I know. sorry. You can't no. really beat him but, in The Rock. But when that He's when the, the trailer made me a fan of like I'm a fan of the trailer. I'm like, that's Conair? absolutely he's making fun of He's making fun of the person he is on screen, which is a person I don't like, which is the perfect movie for me to watch. I, I was like, this is awesome. I got to watch this Nicolas Cage movie. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's what I want to see. It's like, I want Hollywood to take a step back and be, you know, focus in on itself. Cause it's kind of funny. Like his, his, uh, you know, starring in from Con Air to leaving Las Vegas and, and having this tra crazy career and have someone be a super fan, like that's all really, that's a really funny premise. I really love that idea. Yeah. Yeah. It was a chance for sure. You know, not, you know, it, fortune favors a bold and um, the story for this film is yet to be untold because it is one of those, like uh, it from, to me from the very beginning, it has, it's had this eerie reminiscence to uh, the big Lebowski in terms of it's mm -hmm. like, um, like the style of the humor. And once it like, once you get it, like you can't get enough of it. I'm speaking personally, having gone to Lebowski Fest myself many times, most recently <laughs> in 2013 in Milwaukee. This uh, time, uh, Wait, party, did you go fishing? Like, did you go fishing when you were in Milwaukee? Did not. I did not. No, no, no. no fishing for white I, Russians. That's I know a tour guide. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> that's so it's got that kind of energy, you know. And I think that's it's a uh, it's uh, it was a bold it's a bold release for us, and I think it's it's an important step in. Uh, Lionsgate defining itself in this market, yeah, you know, because we don't yeah. have an association. We, you know, and that's a double-edged sword. I don't know if it's. It, I think it's probably it's probably better. We don't have an association with a particular genre or type of content that's really particularly strong in moviegoers' minds. So we have the like the fluidity to sort of be a little bit of everything to everyone. But it's also like, um, I think you know, focusing our bets, focusing our bets. Our slate strategy is really a. Um, uh, a big conversation that's happening internally and where we see ourselves in the next like two to three years. So can you, I mean, don't get yourself in trouble, but what's the takeaway internally? I, I, you guys open strong or what's the, what's the overall takeaway from where you guys are now and what you want the film to do in the long run? Cause it feels like it's a long tail model, right? And you guys are absolutely, thing. absolutely. Yeah. Cause that's part of like, yeah. After we had our realignment, um, it was that last summer, you know, couldn't have been the summer before. We're now that there isn't there isn't a distinct home entertainment division. It's like a one kind of holistic 360 right. approach, right? So we see the title from um, from beginning to at, at every phase of its kind of transactional lifespan, and um, and look for different signals along the way to help us determine if it's you know how how things are going. So I use that as an example because the last time we were talking, I think uh, Moonfall had just come out, um, mm -hmm. and that was like you know we of course we want always want every one of our titles to do a lot more than it does. That goes without saying. The story with Moonfall was not entirely told by its opening weekend, its theatrical run. It's being sort of continued to be told as it moves through its EST and VOD windows where it is doing extremely well. So it's a different, sure. like, it's a, you know, we're at, we're at these, like you could say every weekend is another inflection point in the industry, right, in its own way. Um, <laughs> But this kind of inflection point I think we're at now is the uh, we're starting to see this original prop, these original products kind of bubble up through the uh, through the marketplace. We're getting more dense weekends with with more titles kind of packed in, which I think is a critical factor too in terms of getting people excited about coming back. So instead of just being like basically one movie right every weekend, the more the merrier, right? And the, yeah. and the more that that invigorates that kind of theatrical um, environment. Do you? It, with that thought in mind, does it have to be a gigantic opening weekend in order to have the long tail success? Yeah. Um, because films do roll up, right? I mean, well, Keith doesn't go to the theater anyway. You have to be at telling the score two months later because that's the only time Keith sees it on on his TV set. But I'm just saying, like, there, but I'm also saying, like, there is <laughs> with the movie. right title, like the whole idea of the Nicolas Cage movie. I can imagine it just being small little mo moments inside of different groups of people and like oh let's just go watch that movie oh that's hilarious that's you know and be able to turn it on because it, it has that kind of play yeah. um that there i i'll say like i i want you to say yes like that you you want that stuff because i feel like hollywood now has the opportunity 
to play that game and say, let's not just push everything on the first screen on the first weekend and call it a success. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's recognize that mm -hmm. Coda won the Oscar after being rolled out on a, on a, a, a OTT platform. And it got notoriety and word of mouth, um, everything everywhere. Again, like it might have a great long theatrical moment. I don't know if anyone anticipated that, but word of mouth did its thing. That's exciting to me that word of mouth has that yes. presence now. Yeah, it really is. It really is. And it's because because it's who that word of mouth is affecting have been, I think, uh, audiences that have been the most sort of reticent to come back to theaters. So it's that chipping away at those, um, you know, remaining holdouts is really the, the mission. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's kind of exciting that this hopefully means like a, almost like a, a reset in terms of how movies are looked upon. And it's not, you talked a little bit about, I think before we started Tim about how it's not just the opening weekend anymore. It's more about what's happening to the life cycle of the entire movie, Yeah, which is definitely a shift from where we were pre pandemic, where it was the saying goes opening weekend is the marketing partner's job. After that, it's the movie's job. Yes. Now it's just the movie, just it's just a different game because there are so many different revenue channels that are now coming into play. Yep. You can't just base it on those three days yep. or four like days. So that many happen. Pay, all those pay windows and all of yes. those deals are just like gravy. Right. Gravy train. So yeah. you just got to focus on producing quality content at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Make good shit. Make good shit. There you go. Yeah, Coach or <laughs> and give it give it an opportunity to play out in multiple fields over multiple time. I yeah. mean, as a studio to be known for something in a certain field, I think A twenty four does a good job of like has a roster of films and they're known for it. So then even the studio has a fan base because of it, because yeah. of the thing. Like Lionsgate has that same opportunity. We watch what comes out of there. We like what it has. You guys have a different pace than at Disney, but we'll take it. Um, and a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about the success of Paramount, just recognizing. Paramount's just been hitting number one, right? number nine, yeah. and that's yeah. from behind kind of a win there, but it's a, it's a smart rollout and knowing their audience yeah. and the, and maybe a little bit of luck, like the demographic change or the, the viewership opportunities changed and they've, they had the right roster to make that happen. So it's pretty yeah. cool. I, I think they, I don't know, I don't know, but I think they just hit it. I don't think they had much luck. That's a sharp team over there. A lot of former, not just because of, you know, we know a lot of people who work there and yeah, they're top end. Top yeah. End. They're, 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 yeah, they're firing on all cylinders and they know yeah. how to roll out all their product and it's kudos to them because they were pretty much left for dead. <laughs> yeah. and now they've right? kind of had a resurgence, yeah. which is great. Really great run. Really good. Yeah. One. Uh, it's another Hollywood story. Paramount yes. like every, every yeah, 40 right? years right? comes out well, with now, this like, and, and the yeah, well, how's the story evolving now that, um, and I think this is of course, a little bit of this is much to do about nothing, but the whole Netflix kind of nosedive yeah. uh, is a is a is that a hyperbolization of what actually is happening is a level setting. Like everything mm -hmm. kind of returns to a balance, right? And yeah. so rather than portraying that as a the sky is falling <laughs> and this model is busted, everyone knew they were spending too much money. It was not right. Money. Nobody every, nobody Shocking thought this was gonna go on forever. Everyone's like, how the fuck how the hell are they gonna continue like 18 billion dollars and yeah. Red Notice looks like something you would get in Redbox. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Right there, you go, Tim. See, crappy quality at Netflix. <laughs> I love it. Our Tims are together on this. The Tims are together on this one. <laughs> so it's a, I think it's an issue for them, though. I think it's an issue yeah. for a challenge. Yeah. You know, and yeah. but here on the other side of that coin, wait until the narrative changes when Stranger Things starts again. Yeah. I mean, that's going to be oh, like yeah. that's sure. a cultural event that is transcendent of platform, arguably, yeah. I would say, will have like, um, will impact theatrical, like movie going and that well, on the weekend. It's interesting you bring that up because um, Top Gun is gonna be facing not only that, Stranger Things, but also Kenobi premieres on Disney Plus <laughs> that weekend. Yeah. So you, um, it's gonna be a yeah. lot. I, I mean, we had Cami yeah. on last, was it two weeks ago, I think? Mm -hmm. And she said when they were, when she was at Apple, she was, or when she was at Paramount, she was concerned about um, Lost City of Gold. Was that what it's called? Lost City of Gold. And Bridgerton coming out at the same time because, oh, that's my audience. Are they going to stay at home? And it, clearly they didn't. But, it's, <laughs> but with the double, the double whammy of Stranger Things and Kenobi, both which sort of lean on a nostalgia play, which yeah. is what 
Tom, Top Gun is going to be playing on. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. At it's all. nostalgia it'll be weekend. Really <laughs> cute. It'll be a really interesting test case to see if if people are going to try to do both or yeah. if one's going to win, win over the other. Because well, so. is, uh, is Stranger Things dumping the whole season at once? No, I think Netflix is done with that. They they do like right, and that's like, what Obi Wan, that's what or Disney will do too with Obi Wan. Yeah, so right, that, it'll be that, once a week. Nip, yeah. I think that nips a little bit of that, but yeah, I will cool. have I will have that viewing out of the way before the rest of the <laughs> right. because it's a <laughs> it's a it's a fifty minute viewing instead of a six yeah. hour binge or whatever. Yeah. Six hour about. binge, right? Exactly. You could watch an episode and then catch the nine o'clock showing of Top Gun. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. everyone's going to be talking about it. You know. Oh yeah. That's true. I'm going to be talking about it. I'm going to see it. Tim. Tom Are you really going to see it? Yes, absolutely. Are you going to need to make him show a ticket stub? Tim. I will. I will you. take a picture of a ticket stub. I will tweet it out. I'll put it on my Instagram and I'm going to say F Tim Thompson. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> No, this is the wow, sad part. I like it, this. I like the drama you, here. Can you're going to totally this? You're gonna little, uh, you're gonna totally scene. beat you're going to beat me in this one because I think I'm in Serbia at a conference. Oh. When that when it comes out after 2 years of waiting, when it finally comes out, I'm like, no, I'm actually Well, here's what you do, Tim. When they announce your name, you come out to Highway to the Danger Zone. You come out to Danger Zone playing <laughs> as your your walk-in music. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's the way to get it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to like watch a pirated version of it because so it's oh. it's like in Romanian subtitles. I don't know what I'm gonna have to watch in order to. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna figure it out. I don't know. That's okay. I don't know if they speak Romanian in Serbia, but yeah, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> All right, my friends. I actually have to go. There's there's too much going on here, and I feel busy, like busy. my agent. Oh wait, my agent's calling. Hold on a second there. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be there in a bit. <laughs> Uh, Tim's never gonna I'll take the avocado toast on rye. <laughs> <laughs> on rye. <laughs> on rye. <laughs> With my bubble tea. <laughs> yeah. Is it is it poached egg? Poached or hard? Po poached? No, I don't want that one. <laughs> oh, I gotta love it. All right. Treat as always, guys. Yeah, it's great to see you, my friend. <laughs>